Okay, so talking on, but this is Don. We're talking about our microwave that tried to burn the house down. Look at the plug here. Yep, it's burnt, and the plastic is just beginning to melt there. We got lucky. We got blessed. We caught it just in time. Show you the plug in the wall. Now, as you can tell by the light in the room, the lamp that's plugged in there is working fine. The plug's working. Haven't tried anything in the burnt one. I imagine it would work. And I am going to replace that plug uh, before I put another microwave in there or anything. Uh, before I use that other receptacle, I've got new ones out. And I'll show you where it goes. It's a power strip. Goes right around the corner. made to be that long it's heavy enough wire and it's too dark up in there but it goes to right there there's the microwave and we've had that set up for many years like 16 to plus years I'm gonna say around 20 years you know longer than that well with that particular power strip at least 10 years, probably more. Well, 10 to 15 years, I don't even know it's how long. And we've, This is the third microwave we've used on it, so it doesn't throw any breakers or anything. It's down there. Yeah, you can kind of see. That's how long it is. And it's fat, you know, I didn't make it that way. It came that way, and it's uh, rated to uh, handle what I've got it on. And yeah, well, our, our uh, that little note, because my mom put it on there uh, so that nobody else in the house would use it. But, uh, yeah, our house doesn't have three wire, doesn't have a ground, uh, so, you know, we can't, uh, we have to use that adapter if you happen to notice there was an adapter on the end there. But we've also, we've used it on one microwave the last ten years, another one that lasts about five years that was used when we got it, and then this one we got an uh, 01, 20 of 16, and this is December 3rd of 16, 2016. And uh, it's uh, I've got a, I made another little quick video of showing the website. It's still on the website for sale. I couldn't remember the model number, but it's a Sears Kenmore. It's pretty blurry, isn't it? Now, it didn't. The only indication I had that there's anything wrong with it was what it's been doing since the day we got it. It won't stay on uh, power level 10. It'll kick down to eight. And I read. I didn't, I near generally like to look up reviews and order stuff, but I didn't get the chance to do that. It went out, we needed something, and my mom went and got one. Went down to the local Sears store and got one. And she, she didn't, uh, you know, she just picked one out. Which is, you used to could do that, and uh, things would be okay, but not anymore, because the things are so faulty these days that they might just cause a fire in your house. Uh, when I was looking for a new one, I ran into the pictures and reviews of all different kinds of brands that had uh, uh, piece, um, circuitry inside had failed, you know, uh, pieces, uh, my words are going away, but anyway, uh, different brands, different microwaves, don't even matter what brand, they're all made poorly now, <coughs> and you, in just in the last 20 years, you expect a microwave to last 10 years, 5 years was short. Uh, used one, like I said, the last one we had, the last only lasted about five years was a used when we got it, and uh, the one just before this one <coughs> had a GE that I got at Walmart in 2000 that lasted about 10 years, and uh, before that I think we had a Westinghouse that actually still works. It just won't make enough heat, to, and the one mine does the same thing. It make, uh, well, I think it did start making a bad smell. Something, some kind of component that was the word I was looking for. Some component in there did must have burned out started making a bad electrical smell. Oh, and I didn't mention, okay, well, that's my story I'm getting into. I was in here cooking. It kicks, it'll, when it kicks down into power level eight, you can tell it because uh, you'll hear the fan going on and off, on and off. So it'll go up, you know, the fan will go faster and slower and faster and slower. So then you know, so then the only way though you can get it to, doesn't matter what you do with the power buttons, it won't go back into 10. Been that way since the day we got it. And I read that on the reviews. I did read up the reviews after she brought it home and I was like, oh man, I don't know if this is going to be any good. Uh, 
I noticed I sent an email to myself uh, about about what the reviews and uh, I had 17 people in there that bad reviews out of just a, it was on the Sears website. I don't remember how many was total, but it wasn't it wasn't a lot. Maybe I'm gonna just be liberal and say 100, 150. Probably it was more like 75 people. Typical on their site, 10 to you know, 10, 15 to 100 people reviews. So um, it uh, kicks down into eight, and then all you can do is unplug it, reset it, or uh, I use the button on the power switch, switch some uh, power strip sometimes, uh, so I turn it on and off, and so it'll go back to ten, and usually it'll stay that way until. Usually, what would happen is someone used one of the special features here; it would cause it to do that. That's what we figured out. It's too dark in here now to see anything but darkness. Um, so, uh, you know, I was cooking away. I had it reset, got it back on 10. Because if you don't, then your food will be burned on the outside and cold in the middle, and it'll ruin your TV dinners. And uh, so she just happened to come in, and I was, you know, I was cooking away, and uh, she talking to me. And all of a sudden, she took off around the corner there, and uh, she said, uh, hey, there's something smelling bad. There's something wrong. So, I, you know, I turned it off. She, she thought it was something to do with the microwave or something, so that ca the cord that goes around there. So I turned it off, went in there, and by the time I got in, she said, it was so hot I can't touch it, the cord. And so I, by the time I got in there, you know, it wasn't quite that hot. It was still pretty warm, though. And I unplugged it and saw how, you know, the, con the contacts were burnt and the plastic was already beginning to melt. And uh, so we haven't had it on since, and that's her little note saying, don't use it. And uh, she wrote whatever about Microwave is overheating, extension cord, cannot use microwave. Because we didn't want anybody else to use it, you know. Because we left it unplugged, but, <laughs> you know, we didn't want to get it plugged back in. So, because um, that's nothing to, uh, you know, I've seen that happen on and off over the years. Uh, the, usually the only thing that really ever caused something like that was uh, some sort of industrial type tool, like maybe an air compressor. Not necessarily industrial grade, but, you know, a tool. Or, of course, the all popular space heaters. Uh, and, you know, some of them will have caused that that I've had over the years. Uh, even plugged straight into the wall. And again, like I said, that, uh, that's never happened before. And this is an 1100-watt microwave. And the previous ones are all 1100 and more. I believe we had one. I swear we had one that was 1500. Maybe it was just 12. But that's never happened before in all these years. And... Uh, so I imagine this thing is getting ready to go out. Some kind of component is drawing too much amperage and uh, getting ready to fail. And uh, it's that, you know, the wink, the the the, uh, the place of the most resistance in your circuit is where the heat's going to go. And that was evidently right there at that plug. And uh, and a minute ago I was I kind of got I get sidetracked, but the uh, yeah it's uh, two you know we don't have a three wire setup in this house. It wasn't built that way. And guess what? It's still standing, and uh, never had a fire, and uh, that was because the things we had were made decent. The, the the ground protects you. If there was a short in the, in some kind of component failed, and this this is metal, the, the outside the front's plastic, the rest of the case is metal on this one. And if you were to touch it, and you were grounded, you know, if you're touching your feet on the carpet, say, then. Um, you might get a pretty good shock if there was some sort of a short, a short not necessarily a dead short, should blow your circuit, it should blow your breaker. I've got two protections there, the uh, the breaker in that power strip and then the breaker out there, you know, in the garage that every house has. Um, heavy the breakers or fuses and uh, <coughs> that didn't blow, never has, never had any problem. It's not old, it's not failing, it's not tripping, ever has since we've had it, that, that power strip. So, um, I just wanted to make this and a uh, video here and let people know that uh, don't buy this thing. Uh, it's, it's inexcusable for anybody, anywhere. I know everything's made overseas and people overseas, they don't care about what happens to their customers as long as they keep selling. Well, I, uh, it's inexcusable to be that way, though, or kill people. And uh, it really 
torques me because I grew up in the 50s, 60s, well, I was born in the 50s, grew up in the 60s and 70s here in Texas. And, you know, when things were made in America, there were um, standards that were, had to be held up to. And if they weren't, then that company was either going to be sued or go broke or just because people wouldn't buy this stuff. Now, pe these young people are just like, oh, well, that's just the way it is. We'll even make excuses for these companies sending out DO, you know, products that are DOA dead on arrival. Oh, well, you know, that just happens. But it don't have to be that way. It didn't used to be that way just not that long ago. And uh, it's bad enough selling, you know, people kind of, I remember when uh, we started, first started uh, getting things from, you know, some of these com countries like China that we didn't used to trade with. Uh, People, oh, I'm, I don't care where it's made, it's cheap, and I don't care if it only lasts a year, I'll, I'll just soon have a new one anyway. Well, did you ever think about your life and your house and your home and your children and all that? Well, I don't understand is, uh, I guess, you know, the people over there that live in those countries, they're having to deal with the same thing we are. So, uh, how come they can't put pressure on their own countries and their own manufacturers that they, some of them work for to, you know, make stuff that's not dangerous and that's not just microwaves I mean this is the newest thing on the list of things that are uh, da dangerous is just on and on you if you you know if you if you go look at all uh, product videos on YouTube you'll see no end to the dangerous products but it it's especially inexcusable that uh, American owned companies are selling this junk and, uh, and by the way, Sears doesn't stand behind their stuff anymore either. I bought a, I bought a, uh, the last appliance I'll buy from them, and I wouldn't have bought this microwave from them, but my mom did that. But the last appliance I'll buy from, ever buy from them was a uh, water heater. Uh, within about a year, the thermocoupler went out. That's what makes it, tells it to light up. And um, I'm tempted to go over there and show it, but I'm not going to, I won't. But, uh, you know, I called them up thinking, you know, I've ordered, I don't know how many parts from Sears, and, you know, for different things I've owned because I've tools, uh, you know, routers, you know, woodworking tools, hand tools, you know, mechanics tools I've owned over the years that I used to think they were a great company. And, uh, and it's my stuff from back in the 70s and 80s. It still works. Maybe had to have some repairs. But anyway, the uh, thermocouple went out. I thought, oh, $2 part, no big deal. Uh, but I'll go ahead and get them to send me one. Well, they refused to send me one. They wanted me to hire somebody and pay $75, $200, whatever it would cost, usually $75 just to diagnose, to put a thermocoupler in, which anybody that can use a wrench can do, and I've been doing it all my life since I was a kid. Uh, so, um, I went and bought one at the local store and put it in. And uh, luckily, it's still working. That was at least 10 years ago so you know the rest of it was okay I'm sure they wanted that to um, th they planned that in there you know for things like that to fail so that uh, they can uh, you know that they they have people that they uh, work with that I'm sure they make some money off of these contractors to uh, come out and work on stuff so I've heard story after story about their appliances and this sort of thing happening uh, after that after I learned the hard way but uh, so Sears you wonder why you're almost bankrupt well this is why can't believe you're still in business so anyway that's enough ranting for tonight and uh, so here you go that's my warning on the Kenmore microwave that I have and uh, yeah it's still in warranty and we could uh, probably get them to take it in and fix it or maybe even replace it but I don't want another one I'm uh, tempted to do it just on principle, matter of principle, but uh, probably be more trouble on us than it'd be worth. So, we'll see. Alright, bye.